When British scientists first discovered a platypus in 1799, they thought it was a joke. They said someone had sewn a duck's bill onto a beaver's body. But they were wrong. It's just a flat out weird looking animal. But it's not the only one. So how did Australia become the land of wacky animals? Let's take a look at our mammals. Worldwide, there are three types of mammals. There's placentals, which are like us, there's monotremes, which lay eggs, and then there's marsupials, which have the little pouches. Ew! It's not like in cartoons. Most of the mammals in the world are placentals, but Australia is kind of different. We're the only continent on Earth with all three types, but also the only continent where marsupials dominate the landscape. So let's go back to where it all began. About 250 million years ago, Australia was part of a much bigger island called Gondwana. Gondwana contained most of the land in the Southern Hemisphere, and it also had plenty of wildlife. Over time, Gondwana started breaking up. One by one, continents split, and about 40 to 50 million years ago, Australia was left on its own. This meant that all the animals that were on Australia and didn't have wings were now kind of stuck. And this is where things get interesting. See, while in the Gondwana days there were marsupials all over the place, pretty soon they started to disappear and the placentals started to take their place. Except in Australia. That led scientists to think that maybe the marsupials were the only animals that got stuck here and that's why they did so well. But one discovery kind of shook things up a little bit. Back in 1987, scientists discovered the fossil of a placental mammal in Queensland called Tingamara portororum. Say that three times fast. The scientists reckon it was living on Australia around the time it broke off, but it's pretty hard to pinpoint a date. And it might have just been one little placental living in a marsupial world. But anyway, over time, the marsupials started to evolve into all different shapes and sizes. And because they were so far away from anything else in the world, they morphed into something pretty unique. What are you doing in the big? Around 100,000 years ago, animals were big. And I mean, real big. We had giant kangaroos known as Procoptodon that grew bigger than two meters, an enormous wombat called Diprotodon that weighed about 2,000 kilos, and Megalania, which was a ginormous five meter lizard. Imagine that waiting for you in the garage. Ugh. But about 50,000 years ago, all of these animals started to die out. Now there's still a debate as to why this happened, whether it was hunting or global warming, or more likely a combination of both, but that's a different story. Over the years, Australia's climate became progressively drier and more arid. Plus, we didn't really have any volcanoes or earthquakes to bring in fertile soil and so Australia became a pretty tough place to live. One theory is that only animals that didn't use much energy and didn't need heaps of food were able to survive. And so marsupials were able to make some pretty nifty adaptions, like copying on two legs and shrinking in size to save energy, or changing their teeth to suit the food here. They did have one advantage, and that was a lack of big predators hunting them down. I mean, there was one cat-like predator, the Thylaca leo, and also a carnivorous kangaroo, but they died out with the megafauna. And then there was the thylacine, the world's only marsupial wolf, which was wiped out on the mainland when dingoes arrived 4,000 years ago. Oh yeah, and there's these guys too. But compared to the rest of the world, it's far from a carnivore carnival. So basically Australia's been doing its own thing for a very long time, completely unsupervised. And that's made us a living laboratory of evolution's coolest and quirkiest concoctions. Way to go, evolution. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure you chuck us a thumbs up and head on over to our channel as well. We're gonna be putting up heaps of new cool videos in 2020. And while you're at it, head on over to the ABC Education website. You'll find heaps of cool resources for students, teachers, and your parents.